Now that we've decomposed our WPF application into vertical slices to increase its cohesiveness, we can leverage this to clean up our application's startup. So specifically, I want to tackle this app.xaml.cs that has all of our dependency injection set up. Because as you can see, this is very complex and just has everything mixed together. So it's hard to see what dependency injection registrations apply to which vertical slice in our application. So that being said, we're going to add an application layer to our WPF application that's going to be responsible for application setup, such as registering dependency injection services for specific vertical slices. So over in our project, let's add another folder, and this is going to be called application. So this application layer is really the topmost layer, so it'll be able to reference entities, features, and pages, bring those together in order to bootstrap our application. So in this case, we're specifically concerned with dependency injection. So we're going to add another folder here called dependency injection. And this dependency injection folder is going to contain extension methods that'll be responsible for registering services that are related to a specific slice. So starting with a small example, we could add an extension method over here to add all of the services related to our user entity. So how that would look is by adding a new class in our dependency injection folder. We can call this the add user entity extensions, since it's going to contain extension methods. And then we'll define an extension method in here. It needs to be static. I want this to return an iHost builder so that we can use this extension method fluently on our host builder here. So we'll return an I host builder. We'll name this add user entity. And this extension method will be for an I host builder. And to classify this as an extension method, we just apply this before this first parameter, which is the host builder that we're extending. I also forgot this parent class has to be static too, since we have extension methods in here. And now we can extend this host and we want to add new services to it. So we'll call configure services, get our service collection passed through this callback and all we want to do for adding the user entity to dependency injection is register this current user store as a singleton so as we can see this current user store is part of the user entity so let's register that in its respective extension method so let's cut that out here and register that in the extension method import everything we need and finally just return the host so that we can use this fluently. So let's see this in action. So now in our app.xaml.cs, we can apply that extension method to our host builder. So we can call add user entity and probably need to import that. There we go. And one annoying thing, since we named our namespace application, that means we're gonna have to fully qualify this application, which is part of system.windows that we extend here because there's a naming conflict, which is kind of annoying, but we can just fully qualify this system.windows.application and that'll resolve that. So now rather than registering the current user store here, we've done it in this extension method. And now everything related to supporting our user entity functionality can live on its own within this extension method. And if we run this should work as expected, we should be able to resolve that current user store and we'll see that if our application boots up successfully, which it does. And we have the username of our current user in the header as well. So now we can apply the same pattern to other parts of our application as well. So let's take a look at our secret message feature. So let's add another extension method here in our dependency injection folder. We're gonna call this class the add secret message feature extensions. Make this static since it'll contain extension methods. And same thing as before, let's actually just copy our existing extension method for the user entity and use that here as a template import everything that we need and we're going to call this one add secret message feature and it'll contain everything related to registering our secret message feature with dependency injection so let's see what that is so this i get secret message query that lives in our secret message feature so let's grab that we can just cut it out and paste that in here to import everything that we need. And to register this, we're gonna have to get into our app configuration. So we need to dig into our host builder context, which contains our configuration. And we can simply do that by using an overload of this configure services method that takes in our service collection, as well as our host builder context as a second parameter. And actually, I think I got that backwards. So the first parameter is the host builder context second parameter is the service collection 
that looks better now to import these other extensions that we need and this is why i like to apply these extension methods to the host builder rather than the service collection directly so since we're extending the host builder instead of an i service collection then we can dig into other parts of the host builder context such as configuration which is pretty useful as we can see here and looking through our service registrations i believe this is the only thing we register relating to the secret message feature and i did want to point out that this extension method applies to the entire secret message feature not just our view secret message feature but if we had a bunch of features within this secret message feature then it might make sense to put everything related specifically to the view secret message feature in its own extension method and quite frankly you can organize your extension methods however you wish as long as it logically aligns with the slices in your application regardless let's use this extension method on our host builder so let's add the secret message feature here and next up let's tackle the authentication feature so let's just copy this existing extension method file that we have and we'll name this one add authentication feature extensions let's take a look at that let's rename it appropriately add authentication feature extensions as well as rename our method to add authentication feature and looking at the authentication feature of course we can add the authentication store to this extension method so let's start off with that pretty straightforward we can also add this firebase auth http message handler which lives in the authentication feature i still feel like it's kind of a misfit living in that feature but for now we can go ahead and add it in this extension method we also have our firebase auth provider that we register this isn't part of the authentication feature but it is solely used by that feature so i figure it probably makes sense to move that into the extension method as well let's import everything that we need as well as get our host builder context in here again so we can get this api key from our configuration so back on the host builder let's add our authentication feature here so calling that extension method that we just added so this is already starting to get cleaned up next up we have these two navigation singletons that we register this is part of our mvvm essentials package so not related to any slice of our application but we can extract it to its own extension method anyways so let's just copy one of these we can just call this add navigation extensions rename this extension method to add navigation and we'll simply add these navigation store singletons so let's register those in dependency injection import them and finally just call this extension method on our host builder so next up most of what's left is these registrations for navigation services for specific pages. So let's start off with the register page. We're gonna put this in its own extension method. So let's copy one of these existing ones and we'll rename this to add register page extensions to update this extension method name. And let's just grab this registration for our navigation service to the register view model. Let's cut that out and paste that in our extension method. Let's import everything that we need and this is a really big registration and kind of difficult to read. So we can at least extract the register view model into its own registration. So we can take our service collection and we're gonna add this as a transient. So let's add transient. So be for the register view model. And we'll need to tell dependency injection how to instantiate this register view model. So let's copy this, paste that in here. Let's use our services in the callback so that we can resolve what we need. And now in the navigation service registration, instead of instantiating the register view model here, we can just resolve it from dependency injection. So get required service for the register view model. And this will take care of instantiating it using this registration that we defined up here. And side note, we want to register our view models as transient and not singleton because sometimes view models need to be disposed when you switch pages. So we wouldn't want to risk disposing a singleton view model. And I'll talk more about this in my navigation series, which I will link. But now let's use this extension method. So let's add our register page. And adding all of these other pages is going to be exactly the same. So I'm going to do that off camera real quick. Okay, finish extracting all of the page registrations. So adding the home page. So add the home view model and the navigation service for the home view model. And did the same thing for the register page, of course, which we saw initially. 
We have it for the login page as well. The password reset page looks good and the profile page. And there's a lot of duplication in how we register these pages. So I wanna revisit that in the future as well and maybe update the MVVM Essentials Helper package as well. Aside from that, might as well add these final registrations to their own extension method as well. We'll just call this the add main window extensions. So let's grab these two registrations, paste them in our extension method. Let's rename this add main window extensions and update the method name. And finally import everything that we need. And finally, finally, call our final extension method. So add main window, and then we'll be able to resolve it when we start up our app. So let's run this, make sure everything works. All right, looks good, application starts. Let's go through and hit all these pages. All right, went through every page, it looks good. And we have successfully organized our dependency injection into appropriate extension methods per slice. So that handles dependency injection, but as our app.zama.cs suggests, this application layer could do more. So at the bottom of this app.xaml.cs, we handle our application's initialization. But continuing to slim down this app.xaml.cs, we could extract this into our application layer. So we could have another folder in here for application initialization. And inside here, we could have a class. We'll just call it application initializer. And starting off, we can just copy over this initialize method that we have in our app.xaml.cs. So let's actually cut that out of our app.xaml.cs and paste that in our application initializer. We'll make this method public, of course. Let's import everything that we need. And we need to resolve some services from dependency injection. So you might think that we could just pass in our dependency injection container into this application initializer so that we can resolve these two services or really four services total that we need to resolve. But instead, we could just take these services through the constructor and then register this application initializer in dependency injection. So let's put all of these relevant services into fields. So the authentication store, the current user store. And finally, we'll need a navigation service for the home view model and a navigation service for the login view model. So let's get each of those. We'll call this home navigation service and login navigation service. So let's get these injected into the application initializer. So through the constructor and let's reference those fields now. We also won't need to resolve anything from dependency injection now. So we can remove these resolutions and instead reference the navigation service that we injected. So this is the home navigation service that we want to navigate to. And these other ones are the login navigation service. So let's remove these service collection references. And this actually looks much thinner now. Pretty satisfied with this. So now let's register this application initializer in dependency injection, and then we're gonna have to resolve it here and then call initialize on it. So we want to resolve the application initializer from dependency injection, put that into a variable here, and then we wanna call initialize on it. But if we wanna resolve this from dependency injection, we'll have to register it. So I don't feel like creating another extension method for this. So I feel like this is appropriate for this add main window extension method. So let's add it here. Because if we're adding the main window, of course, we want to initialize it and initialize the app. So let's add, just make this a singleton for the application initializer. And that looks good. Let's test this out. So we resolve our application initializer from dependency injection. And then we call initialize on it. And that runs through this and should do the appropriate thing based on if we're logged in or not. We are not logged in. So we go to the login page and there we go. So application initialization works as expected. So overall pretty satisfied with this organization and feel like it represents the slices that we've implemented in our application. Maybe we could have organized this better and had like subfolders in this dependency injection folder, such as a pages folder that contained all of these page registrations, but for the size of our application, I feel like what we have now is sufficient. On a side note, another thing I was thinking that would be cool is you can move these extension methods directly in their respective slice. So we can move this add user entity extensions into 
the user entity. So let's move that over here. And now we have some cohesion in this slice. So not only do we have our user model, our current user store, but we also have an extension method to register this slice with dependency injection. So I like this cohesiveness of having the extension method directly live within the slice. I'm just afraid of running into a slice where this wouldn't be the appropriate solution and then not having consistency throughout my slices. So for now, we're going to move this back up to the dependency injection folder in our application layer. But keep in mind, putting the extension method directly in the slice might be a viable option. But just to summarize our current implementation, we decompose the dependency injection registration in our app.zamba.cs into extension methods that reflect the slices in our application, which is much more organized and will make it easier to find registrations related to a particular slice. And then finally, we cleaned up the app.zamba.cs even more by extracting application initialization into its own class within our application layer. So overall, the application layer, the topmost layer of our project, responsible for things like bootstrapping the application with dependency injection, initialization, and miscellaneous configuration concerns as well. So hopefully you can apply this to your own application that uses vertical slice architecture. Aside from that, if you have any questions, criticisms, or concerns, be sure to leave those below in the comment section. If you enjoyed the video or are enjoying the channel, consider becoming a member. Other than that, leave a like and subscribe for more, and stay tuned for more vertical slice architecture improvements and experiments. Thank you.